Well, that's a proper test jig if you ever saw one, isn't it? So, uh, it's been a while since I made any content about uh, the uh, constant current load, and uh, since I've been using it almost constantly for testing the battery batches for the desulfation experiment, uh, I haven't really had any time to, well, delve into it further. And uh, it's actually been working great for such an early prototype project. But uh, today I had some issues getting it going, and the uh, reason was that uh, this is my charging setup for the uh, batteries on the test. These clamps are going into one of the inputs of this unit, and uh, it's uh, the other end's going to my old lamp power supply of air, which is set for 14.4 volts to charge for batteries up after a test. and. Uh, Someone had stumbled over these leads and shorted them out with a battery connected, so one of the 20 amp fuses on the output was gone. Anyway, just figured we'd have a bit of a recap on this thing, for no particular purpose. So I think I made, the last time I made a video about it was I hadn't really finished the looming work on it. It's pretty dodgy as it is, but uh, uh, we do have everything actually loomed up, and I'm quite happy with the result. It's very uh, traditional looking, and I have a fancy for these uh, twisted ties for looming work. I haven't bothered looming these uh, communication cables, which go between the uh, four different uh, current sync boards. And uh, for those out there who might not even know what this thing is, uh, it's uh, a quad 10 amp. Uh, current sink. It can do about 150 watts per channel, so about 600 watts total, which is why we've got these giant fans on the side. And they go like that. And the entire box is basically just a giant heat sink. And it's got a little a very hacky a thermal control which uh, has a couple of NTCs there and there so it has the two individually controlled uh, channels for adjusting the fan speed and uh, all in all despite its looks it, this thing has been working great it's been producing very reliable results and very repeatable results when I've been testing the batteries so uh, with the uh, new 20 amp fuse installed uh, it actually works I can I apparently can't start to test, something's gone wrong again. Well, that's weird. <laughs> Okie dokes. Uh, pressing one of these red buttons is supposed to start a test, but this time it just uh, caused the uh, board uh, to reset. I'm not entirely certain as to why. It, oh no, hang on, I've just disabled the relay tick. These boards have a relay which is, uh, well, is uh, just able to swap a couple of connectors, but in this this particular box there, it's just connected to hook a charger straight to the battery. It essentially hooks these up and lower pairs of banana plugs up in parallel in order to recharge a battery after you've had it under test, so yeah, it actually started, I'm used to it just to making a little tick noise when you click the button, but that's obviously not happening. And this thing does have a computer interface for configuring it, obviously, since it doesn't really have any knobs beyond the, uh, the fan controls here, which are just entirely analog and manual, going straight to the dot bodge board over there. And uh, I don't think this, yeah, this switch just uh, uh, is not connected up. It's just there for no reason. Anyway, we can actually go to the uh, computer and uh, configure this thing. So. Uh, now we're on channel 2 there, which is the one I, I've been using for the uh, desulfation stuff. Uh, it's a bit of a bother because you need to have all three boards powered up in order to be able to use them, since they are just data change. Uh, they're, they're using one serial port to going just from one board to the other to the other to the outside of the case, and then finally to this laptop. So it's uh, a bit of a bother running it on channel 3, but I was... Uh, when I started the experiment, I was also running a lot of tests on these giant batteries, and they were using channels 1, 
2 and 4 so channel 3 just happened to be the one which uh, had to be used for the uh, desulfation experiment and uh, I'm just not willing to risk the quality of results by swapping to another channel since the calibration on these boards isn't great. Uh, actually since the relays are on while the actual current sink is discharging the battery indeed the relay variations in the relay is causing a few milliamps of uh, both drift and uh, uh, just a non-linearity between the units so uh, they aren't exactly perfectly calibrated and they certainly cannot really be uh, compared between each other especially not for the, the uh, low currents I'm using for the desulfation experiments and I'm just discharging at 500 milliamps and uh, with 100 milliamps uh, roughly going uh, into the relay uh, yeah that's just uh, not a very good uh, setup for accurate results if you switch to different units anyway let's just uh, set the relay to be on while it's running and uh, off when it's stopped which should make it go tick when I press the start button yes indeed and now we are discharging the test battery there excellent and should go back to recharging it now yeah 13.56 so there we go So that little bit of maintenance is out of the way I can put this thing back together and uh, actually uh, get some diagnostics going on these uh, desulfation batteries. I think I'm on uh, I think I'm on batch number five, yeah batch number five eight of seven so we are moving along uh, even though I did suspect that this would take a few months to get done uh, it's taken a bit longer than you I actually expected since uh, I'm using my lab power supply my ex 752 m to uh, charge and uh, charge these batteries and I need to use that for other stuff as well since it's basically my only dual channel power supply <laughs> so there's a lot of idle time when I just uh, don't have a power supply available but it's going to need it for some other project or just uh, recharging the solar bank or something in case it's been very dark, which it uh, usually is in Finland during winter. But we're moving along slowly. Depending on factors, I might be doing a lot of real life stuff soon. So I might uh, even have to postpone this quite uh, significantly into the future, but uh, I'll try to make the batteries hurry up with their restorations but yeah, you cannot hurry a tired lead acid battery along there you go in there please another fun fact about this device is that uh, the case is uh, an old NEC uh, TV, analog TV power transmitter this uh, particular unit was uh, used to, to drive the uh, Firefron, I don't know how to pronounce that. Firetron, a 50 kilowatt tube for a giant piece of equipment. Not for one I made a tour about ages ago, but one which was scrapped prior to that. And these cases are just great, I've got a few of them lying around. They're just, I mean, it's basically a two rack unit heatsink. So any high power stuff you need you can just whack it in there and it fits a few fans on the side perfectly I should actually in the future get a rack to mount a couple of these cases in and just to maybe have some oh I've well, now cross threaded that, that's not a good thing the iron tile aluminium and the screws are stainless steel so all of this stuff is very 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 soft Ah, uh, yeah, that that doesn't feel good. Oh, well, maybe I'm yeah, just uh, the entire case is moving, so it's just uh, straining against that screw there. These are difficult engineering hurdles. Uh, this is just not going in well. Oh well. I've got spares, and I can just uh, tap new threads into these if I so need to. Mm. Alright, let's get it 
up and let's try not to short of these eight again. Now the trail I was using for test is my <laughs> work light. Cheapo Chinese lamp on a board with a light switch and a 12 amp hour lead acid battery. Yeah. Let's just get the actual device on the test. On the test. And see if we can get this started. The lead does have a 4 wire voltage measurement. So you need... I've just got this... Uh, I'm using an, uh, a DB9 connector for this. It's really suitable because we've got uh, eight pairs uh, of. Well, I've used uh, just raw Cat5 really for this. So we've just got uh, eight pairs of these, no, four pairs of these uh, alligator clips, which are just to uh, clip onto the device under test. There are some firmware tweaks which need to be done in order to get this to really work properly. It's been a bit back and forth because this project has been a bit stagnant for some time now. And I'm not the guy doing the programming. So, yeah. It's a bit the way it is. Anyway, we should be able to just start running that and log it down to far now. Yeah, the battery is full. We're at 14.4 volts. And... Uh, we're cutting off at 10.8 volts, 500 milliamps, this looks pretty good. One second logging interval. And this one look, wow. This was a really weak battery, most of them stick around 12.6 for a little while. This one didn't. In fact, the group 5 has been very poor in general, for some reason. Uh, the uh, desulfation guy. They usually take a few days to start drawing a bit of current, but uh, uh, the desulfation brother of this one just uh, hasn't done anything yet, and it's been sitting for quite some time. So it's not looking good, and certainly with this one dropping to 12 volts under 500 milliamps instantaneously, this couple seems to be in pretty bad nick. So, uh, just general statistics on the desulfation project. Uh, Lots of them, the batteries have been clocking in between 1 and 2 amp hours, which is actually surprisingly decent, you know, given their general condition, but uh, certainly not uh, anywhere near new batteries, because they are measured at uh, 500 milliamps, so it's not a very high rate. The internal p impedance is still shit. Anyway, I've been rambling on for 14 minutes now, probably a bit less after cutting out a few awkward silences, so... I'll uh, leave you with that. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.